took five days to spend in absolute darkness and silence as much as I possibly could. And I tell you, it's a lot harder than it seems. Uh, this idea stemmed from a book that I was reading called uh, Blindfolded Sight and Chi Development by Robert Smith. And it mentioned some old cultures uh, kind of doing a retreat sort of thing, spending time in a cave. Wouldn't call it a retreat, I guess, back then. It was uh, for spiritual and uh, psychological development, uh, development of the, the sixth sense or the third eye, uh, things of that nature. So I was intrigued and I started, I, I also heard it about it from a few other sources and then I decided to look for it on YouTube and it turns out there's people who have recorded uh, kind of their experience just like this after spending five days in a, uh, in a like a retreat, a darkness retreat, I think they call it. Uh, I call it five days of darkness. I think five is kind of a... They say that after three days, the uh, melatonin levels start to rise significantly higher than normal. And, and after three days, that's where you begin to have an experience. So three days is kind of a minimum and then every day after that is just progress. Uh, it's kind of the way I was looking at it and kind of the way I see it. Uh, so I'll tell you what I think about the experience, but first I want to tell you everything that went into it. There was more than just, I'm gonna go sit in a room. So the first thing is fast for three days or go on a super clean eating diet. So what I did was I juiced uh, fruits and vegetables, used a centrifugal juicer, and I did that to prep so that's another thing is food prep for the week uh, to make it easy on my very supportive and loving spouse who I greatly appreciate supporting me through all that. Um, but instead of fasting, I just ate vegetables, drank juice from fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, water. Uh, I use an electrolyte remix called Relight. It doesn't have added sugars and dyes and all the junk that you get with like Gatorade or body armor. Uh, so no meats, no dairy, and I did that for three days prior to the five days in darkness. Uh, so prep the clean foods, that's number two, for your time during the experience. Uh, you want to have something to eat, but you don't want to have a whole lot to eat. And here's the reason why. The mind, the brain, and the body communicate a whole lot better when your stomach is not digesting and because of that you are much better off getting the most out of your experience if you're not eating a lot you don't want to indulge uh, so the third thing I did was I set up a quick playlist quick access playlist on my phone so that way uh, and it has like 12 different meditations that I listen to and so I prepared that so all my wife had to do was open my phone, hit play one time for me and, and I could listen to or pause my music or uh, meditation, guided meditation and then just some binaural beats uh, anytime from my headset. So I used a Bluetooth headset, I could pause it. So that was really convenient. Uh, where was I? I was talking about uh, preparing. So I set up meditation music. Uh, prepared foods and I did a little bit uh, three days of clean eating prior to uh, another thing that I set up was a uh, earplugs and a sleep mask and so I bought a Manta sleep mask which I will go uh, I'll insert a picture of it for you to look at but uh, I bought it it's like 35 or 40 bucks after tax and shipping expensive Super comfortable, absolutely loved it. Great fitment, um, adjustability on it. Big deal, love that thing. Uh, I'll, I'll make a video of that as well. But I got earplugs and a sleep mask. And then I also think this is big and I haven't seen it mentioned anywhere, but writing down your intentions, what you seek to uh, gain, what you seek to develop in your experience, uh, I think that's a really big deal that I have not heard mentioned anywhere. 
and, and it's something that I did. Uh, so those are the five preparation things that I, I would recommend everybody to do. Unless you're in like a legitimate dark room that's insulated uh, away from other people and it's absolutely soundless and pitch black, um, I did the mask and the earplugs to accommodate for that. Uh, I also taped up all the windows in my bedroom and my master bedroom and bathroom uh, with foil. Uh, just for the time that I, I was doing that and I did that to block out any potential light leaks and, uh, and it, it was quite effective but those are things that you might do if you're not gonna spend the time and money to f go somewhere and, uh, and, and pay for that experience so during the experience uh, I recommend this listening to some binaural beats or meditations um, doing breathing exercises. So I did some Wim Hof breathing exercises, some uh, a little bit of like square breathing, uh, a little bit of turtle breathing type stuff. Um, I drank a lot of water. I ate the food that I prepared. Uh, my wife just microwaved it and gave it to me. I'd knock on our door. <laughs> hey, can you feed me? <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, something else I learned from watching a fasting video is that if you use something like salt water and I use an electrolyte remix that has a lot of salts in it called R-E-L-Y-T-E Relight uh, and that has, it's got a lot of salts in it um, it helps soothe hunger and so that was something that I was utilizing during my fat of my uh, experience my days in the darkness and it, it significantly helps when you're hungry so Another tip for you, um, stretching and exercise. So I did a little bit of yoga and light exercise, some push-ups, squats while I was uh, doing this. That's it's helpful, uh, gets blood flowing. Uh, it's just good for your body. But uh, I kept my mask on during the day, during the night, because I didn't want any light leaks at all. And then uh, I asked my wife and I told my daughter, do not talk to me. Keep any conversation to an absolute minimum. I don't want to have conversations about anything. Uh, if you have a question, ask me. I'll answer it. Be done. Uh, because I'm doing this at home. So, uh, Moving on to my experience. And what I actually experienced was uh, very interesting. The first two days, I slept a lot. So day one, day two a lot of sleeping a lot of just hanging out stretching it was nice and relaxing by the third day I'm singing to myself um, humming things and just bored out of my mind and thinking about stuff and I think that's that's significant that's that's that three days that I had mentioned before um, so three days and uh, after the third day was complete I was like man maybe I, I should just go ahead and stop you know I'm losing my mind here and I thought no 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 these these are the thoughts that you have before you give up I'm like no I'm not, I'm not quitting I got five days that's it it's five days what's five days and so I very much felt after the third day like uh, almost depressed and, and loneliness and I've felt this before the thoughts and dreams dreams started to you know I was remembering more of my dreams you get to pay attention to those things uh, because you're sleeping at random hours or whenever through the night and oh yeah sleep patterns where the sleep patterns were the same for like the first three days and then after that it was screwed my sleep patterns were screwed um, but talking about seeing stuff so some of the titles the what do you call them clickbait titles that I found on YouTube were like DMT experience like you'll have this DMT trip if you you know go into the darkness for for three days or more and uh, I can't say there's any truth to that at all. I have, I think people are just blowing it up, uh, making stuff up as well. 
I did get to observe something very interesting and it started early in my experience and it, uh, and it continued throughout the whole thing. So if you think about like looking at the clouds and you can find shapes in the clouds, right? And it's the same thing if you, you know, uh, the man on the moon, for instance, right? We look at the moon, we try to make a face out of what's there. Uh, our mind is constantly trying to take things that we're familiar with and associated with and like put it together, you know, and based on what we're seeing. And when the mind can't do that, the eyes are like constantly searching for something. I mean, I'm wearing a sleep mask. My eyes are totally covered and, and they're totally open uh, because, you know, it's hollowed in, inside of the mask for you. So you can do that. And you're trying to focus on something, but there is absolutely nothing there. And after the first day, you start to see like shadows of things. I'll tell you, I even thought... I could see my shelves, my my uh, in my room, my bookshelf, and I'm I'm like, oh, there it is, and I went to reach for it, and it's just a wall. My bookshelf is like way over there, <laughs> so my mind was trying to like piece stuff together, and it was uh, it was really cool to observe and uh, be able to explain, but might might sound a little far fetched. Now these things I was seeing while I was totally blind, I wasn't seeing clearly. It, it's like, it's like shadows in the night. Like you're not sure, was that a shadow? Or was that just the darkness that I just started to notice? And then the mind starts to create d these things. And then you start to see the patterns of like triangles or your, your imagination just kind of shifting and moving around uh, just through you know, looking, uh, I'd see weird kind of statues. I kept seeing, um, like stone statues, stone heads, like Easter Island heads type thing. Uh, and, and, and within that vision, but it, it's not like a vision. When I say that, it's not like watching TV. It's not like looking at a video by any means. It's like just vague shadows that your your mind's kind of making and and they would just shift and turn into other things and move and it was, it was intriguing and I spent quite a bit of time just observing it just kind of going hey can I can I consciously control what I'm observing here or is this like totally random and I want to say I could influence it but I could not control it totally um, but once again those are not like visions and experiences that it's like the brain trying to create something that's not there from the imagination because there is nothing from it for it to pull from and within your vision it's, it's pretty intriguing here it is I made it to day three day three was tough I made it into day four day four I'm like yeah this is good I'm on it and well my sleeping sucked so I was up and down throughout the night, and I only knew because my wife came to sleep in the bed that it was nighttime. But uh, after day four, I, I stopped. So I started into day five. I made it, what's 24, 48, uh, 96 hours is four days. I made it exactly 100 hours. I only made 100 hours. And I just hit a point of being in there and I thought, I was going through my thoughts and I'm like, okay, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to get done. Oh, speaking of, there is so much that crossed my mind that I was just like, hey, I wanna look into that. I wanna read about that. I wanna tell somebody about that. Hey, I need to discuss this idea with this person. And, and I couldn't. And it, that was like the biggest, hardest thing is like, I couldn't do anything at all like talking to people communicating learning and that that was really really hard uh, it totally takes away from like your social aspect and feeling like you're progressing like you just feel stale like I'm stuck here like I'm in prison so that was very difficult but on I, I regret so I'm in day five 
four hours into day five and I'm sitting there just kind of meditating, sitting on the floor and I just came to this conclusion, okay, I'm done. Like that's, that's what went through my head and I was like, all right, that's it, I'm done. And I walked out, out of the room and I had the blindfold, the mask on and I just slowly lifted it up because I knew my eyes were gonna be extremely sensitive and they were, they were very sensitive. And so finishing it, that was 4.30 p.m. When, when I stopped. I started at like noon on Sunday and stopped on Thursday at like 4.30. So I was super nauseous. And there was one other video that I saw and a girl come out, you know, it's not here on YouTube, but a girl comes out of her experience and. She's like, I'm, I'm a little nauseous, and the guy said, tells her, you know, it uh, it lasts just a little bit and it goes away. Uh, mine didn't go away. I was nauseous like all through the night, and it, it slowly went away, but it was like I had my sea legs. Like if you've ever been out in a boat, the rocks, and got your sea legs, you gotta be out for like at least half a day on a boat or more. You come back in and you stand on the shore, you know, on solid ground, and you, you're, you feel like you're doing this because <laughs> you're, you're used to doing that from the boat. But, and that's exactly what it felt like, except my nausea was really high. Uh, it was like so high that I didn't want to stand up for like three hours. And then after that, it started to subside a little, but I was nauseous all through the night. I stayed up till like one o'clock that night. And, uh, so that's something to be aware of if you do, you know, decide to embark on this experience. But during the experience, I would stretch, I listened to some meditation, did some breathing exercises, like I said, light exercises, and uh, it doesn't help. It doesn't help the mind when you're starting to lose it. Uh, five days is really tough very tough like I said after day three that's when the challenge really starts um, the eating is a huge part of the challenge uh, I say challenge it's not so much a challenge it's more of an experience uh, if you can do the eating part of it I think you'll get a lot more from it that's just my opinion but that's that's it I did 100 hours or four days and four hours in the darkness of my own house. Uh, I was very happy to finish and I had a whole list in my head of things that I wanted to do. Overall, I think it was an experience worth having. I'm, I'm really glad that I did it because of curiosity really. You know, uh, I've explored different things to develop and progress in my, my spiritual the spiritual part of my life and uh, I think this is one of the many tools that can be used to achieve that and so uh, I recommend doing it if you can and, uh, and, and getting getting what you want from it getting as most much as you can from it I appreciate you watching thank you and I'll see y'all next time